So what is biochar? Biochar, as you see here, is little burnt up material. Um, think about if you've made a campfire and have had some wood, you burn down the wood down to the embers and to the very, uh, to the very broken down bits, or you're making a barbecue and you have charcoal or some other um, uh, material and that's what's left at the end. So what we do is we take this biochar, this charcoal-like substance, and we put it all together in these bio socks. Now, in a sock like this, it's usually about three to four feet long. We fill it with the material Johnny just mentioned. Um, it's only a few pounds when it's dry. And what we do is we attach these to a weight and we'll put them in streams, lakes, ponds, different water bodies at different depths. And the goal is um, that the biochar will help filter out nutrients out of the water, primarily phosphorus and nitrogen. And these are the nutrients that are really responsible for large scale algal blooms. Um, and so we're finding that by implementing these bags, uh, we've seen some really compelling results so far that they can be a, a pretty cost effective solution for reducing these nutrients. Yeah, these uh, biochar is also really helpful in uh, moving water. So like streams, you can, uh, they're like an active filtration. Uh, they're really key uh, to taking out nutrients from, uh, from water bodies. If you're uh, near some homes, have a lot of runoff, these, like, uh, like Will said, these are important uh, tools that we can use uh, in lake watershed and uh, lake and watershed management. We find that they're useful for about six months to a year, and then they need to be subbed out depending on the specific parameters of the site. Um, they can get kind of heavy when they've been saturated with water for a long period of time, but they're fairly easy to replace um, with new bags. And we think that this also contributes to their effectiveness in the field. Hello everybody, I am JP Bell with Princeton Hydro and I run our biochar program here. Uh, as you just saw, you learned a little history of biochar and what it does. We are starting now a SOX Redox program. Everyone will get uh, at least one, maybe two socks, depending on your situation and your dock. Um, and we're here to show you how to attach the sock to your dock, although this is not rocket science, uh, we figure we'd give you a little guidance here. So what everyone's going to get is uh, 12 feet worth of rope. You get some rope, you get a carabiner, and you will get one biochar sock. That looks a little bit nicer than that one. Uh, so you got 12 feet worth of rope, um, depending on your setup and how you attach it, you may have to trim the rope a little bit. Um, we'll see at the end. Uh, but what we're recommending is you take about a foot, a foot and a half, loop it over, and make a little end like so. Uh, so this end, you'll get the uh, you get the the hook at the end. You can put the rope through there. And then we can attach the carabiner to the biochar. The biochar should have a little loop at the end. All right. And it may take a second or two, but there it is. All right, now I'll show you a few ways how to attach the sock to your dock. Um, you know, have your piece of rope. You've already made the looped end. Uh, if you have railings or whatnot, uh, any type of bar uh, attached to your dock, uh, here's one way to do it. Just simply come around, pull it through the loop. That's not going anywhere. And again, Another loop that way we've got our carabiner attached to our sock already, and off it goes and again, um, it'll take about two to three days for it to fully saturate, and then it'll finally sink uh, down into the water column. Uh, if you have cleats on your dock, you can attach the socks this way as well. Uh, if your loop is big enough, 
you can just simply slide it right over your cleat or if you want to get more secure you can come up twist and turn go through and that way it secures itself right there and then your sock is on the other end down in the water finally we have this bucket here simulating a piling on your dock um, and again uh, another way to attach it is you've got your loop at the end as always and just simply wrap it around your piling pull the rope through now you're nice and secure sock on the other end and down it goes um, there are multiple other ways as well um, whatever you guys want to do to secure it uh, I'm thinking also on wooden pilings you could do um, a decent sized eye hook uh, screw the eye hook into your wood piling and tie the rope off or maybe a second carabiner to the eye hook do it that way I would recommend um, securing it first before you do anything with the other end here um, each dock is different your depth down to the water you could be a few feet off uh, the water you might be four feet off the water so secure it first throw your rope over and see how much you have left um, you need you need enough rope to go from the bottom of your dock and this is the other end where the sock is going to be hanging um, this portion right about here needs to be underwater so that way the sock is completely underwater okay um, it's okay if you are shallow in your dock area and I mean it's a three-foot sock and if you get just this underwater and the sock is laying half on the ground that's fine um, if you have enough depth at your location we recommend keeping it vertical and and cutting this enough to leave the sock uh, hang vertical and maybe just touching the bottom um, but if you can keep it vertical and suspend it in the water that would be best but like I said if, if you have to hit the bottom or if it lays on the bottom that's fine too at the end of the year uh, or the next time you grab a new sock for the program uh, you just simply pull it up and take it off simple as that uh, be careful though uh, when these socks are fully saturated they are about 50 pounds a pop uh, disposal of your socks these should be in the water uh, full growing season so you can pull them out at the end of September um, let them dry and like I said earlier they are going to be a little bit heavy fully saturated so be careful pulling them out um, and I would let them dry, just throw them on the ground and let them dry, um, you know, for a couple of days. Uh, they'll go back to their pre-wet weight, which is very light. Uh, and then you can just simply throw them right in your trash. I'd like to thank you for participating in this Socks for Docs program. Um, every little bit helps. And this is a great way to show your support and help the health of the lake.